Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. We are continuing our study in the book of Genesis, and today we're getting just three chapters in to, to where it comes to uh, the, the turn, where this story is headed, and it's uh, it's because of a choice that, that mankind made, Adam and Eve specifically, and it's easy to kind of uh, cast cast uh, play play Monday morning quarterback and say, man, if, if I was there, I wouldn't have, you know, I would have made a different choice, you know, we'd still be in the garden. But but honestly, we all do what Adam and Eve did that day, every single day. So let, let's read the account here. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, it says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say to you, You must not eat from the true, the, the fruit, from any of the trees in the garden. Of course, we may eat from fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. So what she's referring to is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God gave them one rule, one boundary. Enjoy the entire garden, but do not eat, do not touch this tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will die. God gave Adam and Eve a boundary. He also gave them the ability to choose. But if you have the ability to choose, you, you actually have to have choices out there. God's desire is that mankind would choose to obey him, choose to love. God didn't create us as robots. That's part of the created in the image of God part, that God has the ability to choose and he created us with the ability to choose. If you're going to choose, though, you have to have choices, right or wrong. It was very simple, very clear. There weren't, you know, thousands of rules. There was run. There was one. But Satan, Satan, who had already rebelled against God, who had already decided that he wanted to have the glory that God had, that he wanted to do uh, life his own way, had already been kicked out of, of heaven had already rebelled against God along with a third of all the angels. And now he's down here on earth and he is tempting Adam and Eve to do the same thing. Maybe not in the same way, not, not seeking worship for themselves, but to rebel against God, to, to think that they can do life better apart from him. And that's what this is about. And he's, he's crafty. What is Satan doing here? He's lying. So Satan is, is, is full of deceit. He's the father of all lives. He's so crafty at making uh, lies sound like the truth. So he's tempting her. He starts off with a general question. Oh, so you can't eat any of this fruit? She's like, no, of course we can eat the fruit. It's only one, one type of, of fruit that we can't eat. And this is what Satan does. Here's the direct, here's the direct uh, lie. You won't die, the, certain reply, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Here's the lie. That what is actually happening here is God is holding back the best from you. God doesn't want you to experience the best life. That there are better things out there for you. God's holding you back. He doesn't want you to, to be as good as him. He doesn't want you to be like him. So he's keeping you and holding you back. Now this lie has been crafted so many different ways over the years. Because this isn't just about this moment. This is about the moment that we all faced. That we're tempted we buy into the lies that this, this boundary, <clears throat> this guideline that God has given us around, maybe it's around sexuality, maybe it's around the way that we view money, maybe it's around the way that God wants us to handle and behave towards one another, that these rules are holding us back, that if there are better things for us, uh, if we would just cross that boundary, if we would experience these other things, God is trying to limit our happiness. <coughs> just Take that step and you'll see all the good things on the other side. But it's always a lie, just like it's a lie here. Verse 6, the woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her, so she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. We're going to stop there. At that moment, sin entered into the world. They broke God's one rule. That relationship between them and God was now broken. Why? Because sin was in the middle. 
Adam and Eve now had this thing between them and God, their rebellion. God didn't go anywhere. God did not, did not change the marker. God did not pull away from them. They chose to go in a different direction. God said go right. They chose to go left. And that's not a political statement anyways. I don't want to put that in the comments. <laughs> God chose, told them to go one direction. They chose to go the other direction. They rebelled against God. And that is how sin entered the world. Now, this is, this is the conflict. When you think about a story. There's, there's the setting. There's the conflict. This is the ultimate conflict, not just of the book of Genesis, but of the whole Bible. And it's the conflict of our life as well. This rebellion, this decision to break God's commands and rules, and this belief that we have even for a moment or this, this long-held belief that our way is better than God's way, that God's rules are keeping us from good things, when in reality, God's rules are protecting us from bad things. That's the rest of the story of the whole Bible and how God doesn't give up on us. Even though we rebel against him, he's going to deliver a plan to, to break this curse of sin but we're not there yet. We're going to talk about the curse tomorrow. We're going to continue to unfold the story. So we're going to stop here today. We're going to stop here today, continue tomorrow. But what's important for us to remember here in the book of Genesis, in this fall story, yes, Adam and Eve, they ate that fruit. And we can be like, if I was there, I wouldn't have done that. But we do do that. We just do it with other things other than a piece of fruit. We do it with all the different commands. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all made mistakes. We've all rebelled. We all have the same problem that Adam and Eve had. We knew there was a rule. We broke it. And now there's this thing between us and God. But God loves us and he has a plan and purpose. That's what we're going to start unfolding tomorrow. All right, let's go ahead and start our day. If, if you feel like this was helpful to, to yourself or maybe to someone else, uh, you're like, man, I've had a conversation with someone about this and, you know, it always seemed kind of obscure. It kind of always had a hard time describing this to someone and you feel like this is helpful. Man, share it with them. You know, put it in your own words. Give them a call. Shoot them a text. Share the video with them. Let's be multipliers of what God is doing in our life. And let's grow our community here of people that are, are spending time each day, starting their day with the Lord. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we come to you today. And we just start with just a sense of, of grief and, and loss, God, of, of, of how things could be, but, but how they are. And not because of, of, of looking back and blaming Adam and Eve, but God, because of the things we've done in our lives, the moments we've rebelled, we've stepped outside of your boundaries, we've broken your rules, thinking that the true joy and true happiness was on the other side of that. And God, we've experienced enough of those moments to know that it's not true. So, so God, we, we come to you today and we we're sorry. We seek your forgiveness. We, we know that you love us and that you've forgiven us and that Christ went on the cross for all those things. So we, we celebrate that here today. And God, our, our desire is to continue to, to follow you each day, uh, to uh, respect these, these rules and these boundaries you've given us, not because you're trying to make our life more difficult or less joy, but because you have good things for us. We, we take steps in faith because fundamentally we believe that that is true. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.